I think I'd start my journey back when I was a medical student at the University of Pennsylvania. I was training to become an oncologist in memory of my mom who had passed away just a few years before from brain cancer. Watching her battle with brain cancer, being her caregiver, led me to want to go into medicine. Unfortunately, I would, uh, in the midst of my training to become a doctor, begin to learn additional perspectives in the medical field. So my talk at ASCO involved me sharing my perspective as a caregiver to my mom while she was battling cancer, as a patient, which I became ill with idiopathic multicentric calcium disease as a medical student, my training as a medical student on my path to becoming a physician, the work I did as a researcher to identify a treatment that could maybe save my life, and finally as an advocate connector to try to bring together all of those stakeholders. So during my ASCO talk, I shared about each of those five perspectives and how important it is when you can bring the five perspectives together to have one unified fight against cancer, or in this case, against Castleman disease. Skip Burris's theme for the year is Unite and Conquer, Accelerating Progress Together. And so I wanted to share those five perspectives, share the power from uniting them within a given patient, but also share the power when, when we unite those five stakeholders within a given disease and also even across diseases. So as I was sharing earlier, I was a healthy third year medical student trained to become an oncologist in memory of my mom when out of nowhere I became deathly ill. I um, noticed this incredible fatigue. I had abdominal pain, noticed lumps in my neck started noticing fluid around my ankles uh, that was pooling. And I, I didn't know what was going on, but I ended up going to the hospital, the same one that I was doing my training at to get blood work. And I was informed that my liver, my kidneys, and my bone marrow were shutting down. So I was hospitalized right away. And I became very, very, very ill over the next um, seven weeks. I, I was critically ill. And in fact, I was so sick that I had my last rites read to me when the doctors didn't think I would survive. And I've really considered that moment to be the start of my overtime, time that I never thought that I would have, but time that I tried to make the most of every second. This concept of overtime, I think, is particularly relevant right now in the midst of COVID-19. Um, thankfully, I received a diagnosis right around the time I had my last rites read to me of idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease, a rare and deadly immune system disorder where there's immune hyperactivation, which causes multi-organ dysfunction due to a cytokine storm. I was immediately started on chemotherapy and that saved my life. But unfortunately, I would go on to have relapse after relapse after relapse. Eventually, I decided and I, when I failed to respond to the only drug in development that I would need to become a researcher and I would need to search for drugs that could maybe save my life. But I also realized that I couldn't do it alone. And so I would need to create a foundation called the Castleman Disease Collaborative Network to accelerate research on a global scale. In my efforts to start the CDCN and then also to conduct Castleman Disease research, I eventually identified data that suggested to me that a particular communication line, the mTOR pathway, was highly activated and that maybe if I could block it with an existing drug that maybe I could keep my disease in remission and save my life. And so really with no other options, I started myself on an mTOR inhibitor called serolimus and now it's been over six years that I've been in remission and I, and I realized I can't round up, I don't know how long this remission will last for, but I also refuse to round down because I'm so grateful for the important work that's been done to get us this far. Now, we've made incredible progress against Castleman disease through the Castleman disease collaborative network and through the unique approach we're taking of what we call the collaborative network approach to crowdsource research ideas, to create an international research agenda of all the studies that need to be done and then to identify the right researchers to do the work and, and always to look for drugs that can be repurposed. This approach is, is making an impact for Castleman disease. It's also making an impact for other diseases. So as I thought back on my journey and I thought about the theme that Skip presented for the meeting, United and Conquer Accelerating Progress Together, I felt that it was important to share each of these five perspectives and also to share lessons from each of the five perspectives that I thought would be helpful for anyone that sits in, in, in any one of those shoes. So for the patient, I wanted to share a lesson that hope comes in many forms. The kind, there's the kind of hope 
that hopes with everything that you will live longer than the average survivor, longer than anyone, any patient ever has. And that's the kind of hope that I had when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And I hoped she would be the longest glioblastoma survivor ever. Unfortunately, she passed away about 15 months after her diagnosis, but she taught me so much in her life and in her illness that I try to continue her legacy today. The second lesson is for caregivers, and that's around the power of humor. When my mom was ill, I think the last thing that I thought that was needed was for us to laugh and, and to try to, to find positivity in the midst of this difficult situation. I was just so devastated about her illness. But when I became the patient, I realized that laughter and humor and positivity actually was exactly what we needed. Laughing with the people we love is exactly the kind of support that I needed, and it helped me to get through some really tough times. I think that we can all uh, appreciate the power and the importance of laughter in the midst of COVID-19 and all that's going on in the world today. The third lesson that I wanted to share is about how important it is to communicate our limits as physicians. My physician, uh, Fritz Van Rie, is the world's expert for Castleman disease, but I learned midway through my journey that though he is the world's expert and knows as much as the world knows, I recognize that for many diseases, that's actually not enough because in many cases, the world actually doesn't know the answers to all of the questions that we need to help patients. And so we need to communicate clearly to our patients about the limits of our knowledge. We don't know everything there is to know about every disease. And for some diseases, we don't really know anything about those diseases. The fourth lesson is for researchers, and that's that sometimes solutions can be hiding in plain sight. We often work to develop new drugs, new targets um, that can help more and more patients. But I think it's important for us to look in our rearview mirror at all the drugs that already exist. How many of those drugs may already be effective against diseases that we have no idea that they could be effective against? And lastly, I wanted to share about how important it is to bring together all these stakeholders. In my talk, I say it takes an army. And by that, I mean that there's no way that any one of us can make the progress that we need on our own. I wrote a book about my journey called Chasing My Cure, but I actually think we probably should have titled it Chasing Our Cures because it really has been such a, a team effort to get to where we are. And I think it's so important that we all recognize that we can play important individual roles, but we can make so much more impact than when we work together as a team. And I finally just wanna close by sharing that so many of these lessons feel particularly relevant in the COVID-19 world. And I, and I wrote this book, Chasing My Cure, because I felt so many of these lessons were things that I didn't know before I became ill and lessons that I wish I didn't have to have my last rites read to me. I wish I didn't have to go through so many challenges to learn them, but lessons that I wanted to share and want to share with the world. So it was such an honor for me to have the opportunity to share the opening address for ASCO and to continue to spread the word about this effort, Chasing My Cure, about the collaborative network approach, and about the important progress that we've made for Castleman disease. Back when I was diagnosed, there were no FDA-approved drugs. There was no active research being done. Today, there is an FDA-approved drug, siltuximab, that blocks interleukin-6, and it's effective in about one-third to one-half of patients. And thankfully, there is another drug that's also in development, serolimus, the drug that's saving my life. So we're trying to get away from chasing my cure to make this chasing our cures and helping many patients beyond me. Thank you so much.